Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Shirogorov 111. Um, looking back in my channel feed, you guys might notice that I did another Shirogorov review uh, a little while ago. I had a 95T on loan from BT Blades, and I was absolutely blown away by the knife. Soon after that, um, I actually traded into this 111. I ended up trading a custom into it just because the um, market was slow, things weren't really selling. And I really wanted to try another Shura Grov, so I uh, got the 111 in, had it for a while now, finally getting to the review. Alright, so uh, let me show you guys quickly what it ships with here. Um, this particular one came with the uh, standard Shura Grov box. Here's the markings, 111, some of the specs on it basically. Um, this one also came with a leather uh, carry pouch for your belt here, which is um, pretty nice. I don't know that I'd ever carry a knife this way, but um, you know, it's a nice addition essentially with this knife. Also came with a certificate of authenticity, and they have since um, switched over to cards essentially, um, just in the last month or two, so you won't see um, certificates like this anymore, but that's what it looks like. And then last but not least, also comes with a cloth as uh, most knives do these days. So, all right, that's what the knife shipped with. Let's get into the specs here. And uh, this is a very, very large knife. So here we are next to the uh, Kershaw CQC 7K. And <laughs> that's the size difference. So uh, spec wise, we are looking at a uh, blade length of about 4.3 inches on this knife, handle length of about 5.5 inches. The handle thickness comes in at 0.57 inches, although there are portions here that will mill down a little bit narrower. And then uh, some of the, and it does weigh in at 5.15 ounces, so um, Fairly lightweight for such a large knife um, that is accomplished, of course, through um, quite a bit of carbon fiber and then a, a titanium liner lock with a stainless steel insert. Uh, this particular variant, um, there are several variants out there in the production line without even getting into the custom division or the full custom. So um, among the production line, um, so this one is, of course, carbon fiber an M390 blade. It has a, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, this one has a multi-row bearing system and the uh, fuller. So some of the other ones out there are G10, some are washers instead of the bearings. Um, some have the fuller, some don't. So a couple different choices um, among the production ones. I think this is kind of the best of the best in terms of materials here and uh, setup. So. Anyways, different variants. Um, that should do it for the specs, but yeah, just a, a huge, huge knife. You can see the differences there. Let's look at the thickness and so forth. Yeah. All right. Overall impressions. You know, kind of my uh, my tagline for all Shergroff knives is overpriced but exceptional. And we'll talk about value towards the end of the video, but... Uh, the Shira Groves are just exceptionally well built, amazing fit and finish, amazing tolerances, um, incredibly smooth. Their secret sauce really is kind of the, you know, this simplistic full flat grind. Um, you know, even though this is a four inch plus blade, it's very elegant and slender, carries very well. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much my overall impressions for uh, this knife, but pretty much Shira Groves in general. So, all right. Let's uh, let's jump to the details here. Start off with the blade as always. So, of course, we do have the bear right there, the Shergorov logo, M390 blade steel, which is, uh, of course, very, very nice. Uh, but no jimping on the knife to speak of. And then the uh, opening methods. Well, there is jimping here on the flipper tab, but this is primarily a flipper. Flips hard, flips really, really hard. But the fullers here give it additional opening methods so you can middle finger flick with your middle finger. And you can also use your thumb to flick it open too. 
Uh, it was kind of funny, I posted a video not long after I got this and I said, you know, it flips really well and you can do the middle finger flick, but the thumb, the thumb doesn't work well. And one of my followers on Instagram was like, I could get it to open with my thumb. And I was like, well, I guess I'll go give it another try. And he was right. You know, if you give it just a little bit of effort, opens pretty easy there. So, you know, time or two, not hard to pick up in the slightest. So, and the nice thing is all three methods work equally well to deploy the knife. They all, um, you know, it's, it's quite hard to balance, you know, the, uh, the flipper with thumb studs or, you know, an opening method such as these, but they all work really, really well. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. All right, so that's the opening method. It is a full flat ground blade, uh, as long as you discount the fuller, of course. Uh, comes down to a nice uh, keen edge. Kind of really is their uh, secret sauce. Again, full flat grind blades perform exceptionally well for EDC. Um, although a knife this large, you might consider it more of a tactical blade. You know, I think it'll do well in both applications, to be honest. Although I've, I've never really met anyone who uses, who's had to employ a blade for tactical use. So anyways, it's just food for thought. Uh, one thing I will mention is <clears throat> I did have to lock tight the pivot. Um, not only on this 111, but also on my F3, you guys will see in a later video, so uh, not a big deal for me. I really have no qualms with Loctite knives. Um, it's just something you become accustomed to after you've had a significant number, but once I Loctite it, the pivot has stayed uh, exactly where it was supposed to stay, and the blade is perfectly centered. So even when the pivot was coming loose, the blade was still centered and it still flipped well. It's just, you know, this was turning with uh, just light pressure. So anyways, Loctite remedied that. Here, um, there's also some jimping here on the tang of the blade. Um, I've seen it on other knives. I really have no idea what it's for. I suppose you could potentially strike with this. Um, the carbon fiber is probably strong enough. Again, I've never seen anyone, um, you know, test a knife as far as strike capabilities. Um, maybe Blade HQ could give that a try or something, but the value or the cost of this knife is uh, quite substantial, so I doubt anyone would actually do it. All right, handles. Uh, full carbon fiber. It's actually been given a uh, diagonal mill pattern here to give it some additional texture. Hopefully you guys can see that. some junk off it there anyways um, but yeah it's got some you have some milling in here to make it a little bit more comfortable in the hand um, takes a little bit of the thickness off of it and as you guys can see there is a pocket they uh, milled down the carbon fiber where the pocket clip goes just to make the pocket clip sit a little bit closer to the knife uh, pocket clip works well does have a little bit of trouble going in my extra thick jeans, but you know, standard jeans or even dress pants, um, the pocket clip functions perfectly. So there's some uh, texturing here on the pocket clip, although you know, any pocket clip, when you grab down here on the pocket clip, it just pinches it tighter. So you know, I'm always grabbing at the top anyway, and I honestly prefer texturing to be closer to the top. So yeah, uh, partially enclosed backspacer. Pretty clean, pretty simple. Again, you do have some more texturing back here for a reverse grip. Uh, pretty comfortable, works well. Um, does give you some extra texture here. And the pocket clip, kind of in the Chris Reef fashion, has a little notch there in the middle, so. Yeah. Now none of the body screws have come loose. It was just the pivot. Let me show you guys how this knife locks up. So um, you do have a kind of an inset titanium lock bar here or a uh, kind of a sub liner lock, I guess we potentially call it. Um, I do absolutely love the uh, the way that they milled this texturing here on this lock bar for disengagement. Uh, it's 
just superbly done. It uh, catches the thumb. You don't slip. It's not uncomfortable at all. You don't feel it in the hand. Um, yeah, just really, really well done. Um, no one else has done that before. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but let me turn this down here a little bit. On the lock bar, it does say the multi-row bearing system. That's where it's designated. And it is quite smooth. It's actually broken in a little bit more since I got it. It's also really well balanced in terms of the weight there. Um, it feels lighter than five ounces in the hand, but yeah, this thing is just beastly. So, value-wise, uh, we've pretty much talked about everything else. Again, you know, my I, I guess my premise is that um, they're exceptional, but overpriced. So, here we have the ZT0562CF, also done an M390. This one's more of a frame lock, does have a carbon fiber show side scale here. Now, let's talk about the price differential. So, I don't even know what this one goes for. I traded into it, but anywhere from, I don't know, probably 900 to 1200 depending on how, you know, how the market's doing, essentially. Whereas you have this ZT coming in at 240 M390, M390, carbon fiber. You know, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to do a uh, full, you know, carbon fiber with kind of an inset lock. But, you know, is it really three or four times the price for a marginally better knife? Um, probably not, but I picked it up anyway. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. I mean, if you are a collector, you're an enthusiast, and you're looking for that that next high, that next hey, what's better out there? I really do think that the Sure Go Off are probably the best production knives that I've ever handled, but I mean, you're really going to pay for that. So um, that marginal improvement is going to be, you know, three, four times the price essentially. So, um, you know, just food for thought. Um, I, I still like them. I still want more Sure Go Offs. Um, I'm just I have to be careful how many I pick up essentially. So um, as far as kind of the long term with this knife, it is a little bit large for me. Again, at 4.3 inch blade, um, it is very carryable. It's very elegant. I would absolutely love this knife in a 3.75 inch configuration. And I know some of you watching are like, hey, there are enough knives in there. Stop bitching about four inch knives. We want more four inch knives. Well, uh, I don't think they should stop making this one if, if people are buying it, but I would love to see one in a little more scaled down version. Again, I've got, you know, choking up here, I've got that much, and I've got extra large hands, so it is big. All right, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, just exceptional, exceptionally well done, beautiful design, extremely functional, very carryable, just really damn expensive, so... Yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully this video helped in some way or was informative or entertaining or hell, I don't know. If you're watching it, that's good enough. So uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, interested in hearing your guys' thoughts. I know some of you guys will have Shiro's. Um, you, some of you guys may have the 111s. Uh, it's definitely an exclusive club to be in, uh, kind of with what they cost and their availability. So, uh, yeah, take care.